Muslim country, but even in these this country, this, these Islamic countries, it's burning. God, so much. that are throwing acid in the face. She suffered third-degree burns when her ex-boyfriend hired another man to throw acid in her face. These people that practice the Islamic religion. To have opened the door as you would normally, and one motion, bang, this is for you, mate. And it's a guy called, yes, and that's the, those are the words, David Phillips, which we'll, we'll get on to him in just a moment. These Islamic countries. The attack happened in daylight in downtown Vancouver, Washington. Keeping it real, real so we keep it, get ready for Eddie. We encourage people to come to us, ass. Assalamu alaikum, greetings and peace. How are you guys doing? Welcome to the Dean Show. I have my special guest, Mustafa. Sheikh Mustafa Omar, how are you doing? I'm doing great, alhamdulillah. You've heard of our friend Joe Hogan, Rogan? Rogan, yes, I have. There's so many people that have been killed by drones that were absolutely innocent. A lot of them children, a lot of them women, a lot of them completely, you know, civilians. Yeah, some of, uh, he's pretty um, well known also in the jiu-jitsu community. You know, I do jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. Some of my students have brought to my attention uh, some of his episodes. He's had some great guests. Mm -hmm. you know, they talk about nutrition, they talk about sports, they talk about, you know, different random topics. But the, the topics that he's talked about are a variety of different ones, but but one that really caught my interest, and usually it's not just him, when people start talking about the thing that's most precious to me and yourself and mm -hmm. over how many, 1.7 billion Muslims, yeah. when they talk about Islam. Yeah. It really touches my heart. Yeah. But it also kind of throws you off when they start talking, they don't check their facts, yeah. and they have, and I've noticed he had some people, some supposed experts on Islam, just supposed, ca yeah. you know, candidly, just freely, openly speaking about it. Mm. But when you go back and fact check, and that's one thing that people appreciate about Joe, mm. is that he has the person in the back end kind of checking the facts. Mm. But here's the thing, you know, even when you do go back, uh, it's interesting that, and I believe it was in April of um, uh, 1979, something like that, Time Magazine did an article mm. uh, discussing the amount, it was like over a span of 100 years, mm -hmm. over 60,000 publications, books were written against Islam, mm -hmm. right? So that's the other thing. When you go back and you start, you know, fact checking, are you really actually checking the facts? Because you're, you're going to, the, mm -hmm. the Islamophobia industry is so huge. Mm -hmm. It's a 200 plus million dollar industry. Yeah. So I hope after this, Joe, he can invite someone like you. You're in California, aren't you? I am in Southern California, yes. Yeah. That would be, I think that would be great. You know, that would be um, uh, being genuine, mm -hmm. you know, because you got all these people coming on, you know, when you talk about uh, Islam, and mm. these are obviously Islamophobes. Right. Yeah. What, right. Do you, what, what, what are your um, thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, uh, someone who really hates Islam, they have an irrational fear of Islam, which is what Islamophobia is, right? They're going to give you a very distorted view of what the religion represents. So it's, it's, if someone is trying to be honest, they're trying to be objective, they like to do fact-checking, then they should make sure they bring a person who actually can at least represent what the Muslim viewpoint is, and then weigh it, and then do your fact-checking, and then decide between you know, what is fact and what is fiction. Mm -hmm. right? That's exactly what needs to be done. Joe Ho Rogan, I mean, we have a, a lot of things. I, I think he's a pretty cool guy. You know, I think that you know, he does jujitsu, he's into health, he's into real, eating real food, we talk mm -hmm. about those things. Good, yeah. and, I, and I would paint to, to an individual, like it's Matt, you, you've you also trained a little bit uh, jujitsu, right? Yeah, so you know, for someone arts. from the outside who doesn't know jujitsu, yeah. right? They can't really appreciate the mm -hmm. technical aspect of it. Just like someone, uh, you know, coming on talking about uh, Brazilian Gracie Jiu Jitsu, and they're like, "Look at these guys!" You know, a karate guy, someone who's you know, because Jiu Jitsu is not bad for f bad for business, taking over, right? Yeah. It's to prove it most effective martial art. And they're like, "Well, what they do is, you know, they get these guys between their legs, you know, and they try to get them tap out by having by squeezing them so hard between their legs that their guts come out, or you know, they put the arm lock on and they get their." their their um buttocks so close so they can let the the toxic air out of their rear come up you know just i'm mean, just ridiculous things but they yeah. can make up stuff that's like right. this that's, right. that's right? an analysis a analysis right, yeah, right? Exactly. they're 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 commenting yeah. but these guys you know have no joe who's an expert ufc commentator mm -hmm. right now someone comes on who's mm -hmm. who doesn't know the sport or he's right. and now let's say this guy's a, a, a golfer right and he's right. commentating you know he's coming on he yeah. has no clue what's going on in the ground yeah you can appreciate that now you're talking about Islam right. and bringing on these, um, excuse my language, bozos. Yeah. They, they don't know. Uh, yeah. um, 
what really uh, Islam, you're an Islamic scholar, and this term is, well, let's start with that, Islamophobia. Mm. Joe even said, I'm set. He said, I'm Islamophobe. I am said. Islamophobic. Said it. Yeah, that's, that's very unfortunate. Yeah, I saw that clip and, uh, you know, this idea of he doesn't realize what Islamophobia is or what it is. In, in fairness, he also said he was Christian uh, uh, right. phobic. Yeah, so we don't want to right. get him out of context. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, so I mean, the context in which he was trying to say it is that, look, I criticize all religions. I don't like other religions, and I, I should have the right to criticize all of them. And yeah, from that perspective, uh, he's got a point. Yes, he can criticize other religions. Sure, he can criticize Islam, but there's two things you should keep in mind. When you're criticizing Islam, you want to, number one, at least be respectful, right? You don't have to put everyone else down when you're criticizing them, right? That's, that's intellectual integrity. And then the second aspect is when you're criticizing, criticize correctly. Criticize with actual facts, right? There are things you don't agree with. Uh, you don't have to agree with everything. You don't have to. You don't have to accept Islam. But when you're criticizing, don't criticize false things, right? And and this is the problem with with some of these guests that he's been bringing on, and some of the comments that you know Joe was making is that he's saying false things about Islam, attributing them to Islam, but they have nothing to do with Islam. Totally at all. false now. Totally false. I mean, this that's is, misleading. Then that's it's, the it's, thing. It's extremely misleading, and and not only is it misleading, it's not only intellectually misleading, it actually causes violence. It, Islamophobia results in people, it results in mosques being burned around the country. Uh, people being shot in a mosque in Canada just a few months ago. It results in people dying. From mosques being burned down to people being attacked for just looking like they might be Muslim. The alleged case here where an Indian man was killed in Kansas. We saw an 87 and a half percent increase in hate crimes against Muslims. Well, those are official numbers from experts who study this day in, day out. That's not to say President Trump is necessarily responsible. So there appears to be a correlation. We don't know if it's a cause yet, but there appears to be a correlation between political rhetoric and hate crime. But it raises the question, could Trump do more to help stop it all? Here's what history tells us. Following the 9-11 attacks, hate crime spiked. Six days after those attacks, though, President George Bush spoke at the Islamic Center of D.C. speaking of tolerance, and hate crimes dropped 66 percent in the next six days. It results in people uh, failing to get jobs, uh, because people are discriminating against Muslims. I mean, this is this is happening. This is a reality that's taking place, and Joe is feeding into, you know, putting more fuel on that fire, basically. He's feeding into that propaganda machine that's taking place right now against Muslims, particularly in the West. And that's something that he should be more careful about. Yeah. Where do you want to start? There's a, there's a, a few here. There, there was a lot. He's, over, over the years, he's right. brought on many people. So maybe we can do a continuation, but yeah. I, I I think let's start with Islamophobia. Islamoph term. I mean, say Islam yeah. one one of the guys he brought on, he comes up with this ridiculous idea that uh, Islamophobia, uh, you know, it, it was invented by the Muslim Brotherhood, right? right? Yeah, and actually the term started as you may or may not know. It started with the Muslim Brotherhood uh, in a very smart strategy, and it's just this term so that no one's allowed to criticize Islam. And that's not the point. You go to any university, you know, in, in America, and there's articles, critic, you know, criticizing Islam or whatever it is, right? But it's done in a respectful academic manner. It's not done in a hostile manner. There's a difference between that. This idea of uh, Islamophobia being invented by the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, first of all, so what if it was? But but what, what what they're trying to say is that you know we should be scared of them. We should we should have this fear of what's going on. This is a complete you know this, this is a hoax basically. Someone came up with this random idea. Islamophobia is a term that's been used for a hundred years. It, one of its earliest appearances was used in a, a book written about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in French. So in 1918, they were using the term Islamophobia in French um, throughout the 20s, throughout the 30s. Uh, it started to become more prevalent in the 70s and the 80s, and specifically after September 11th and with you know rising Islamophobia that came out. This is so basic fact checking that he could have gone. He could have gone to, and I'm not even going to advertise the website. Robert Spencer is a guy who hates Muslims to the core. He's like. Ma the, like the, the king of Islamophobes, basically. This guy had to come out with an article saying, look guys, we shouldn't make this argument because it has absolutely no basis whatsoever. So if there was fact checking going on, and I hope you know he goes back and double checks this, this is just a false theory. So we shouldn't just keep throwing out all these red herrings, which are, which are false just to distract people.
you know, away from the topic. Yeah, and, that, and, that, and that's not that's not being uh, in, in te- intellectually uh, uh, approaching uh, the the topic, and it's not being genuine. And I think yeah. I think Joe, I mean, I hope that this you know gets to him, and we know some of the same people also, and and I, I hope that uh, he can he can take a turn towards the better, and, and be more genuine in, in covering this because. It's something that that does, like you said, affect the lives of so many people. So many mm-hmm. people have because of Islamophobia, the hate machine. Mm-hmm. Mosques are being burned down. Yeah. People are being killed. Leaders in the Chicago area demand a hate crime investigation after three Muslim students were killed in North Carolina this week. The students were shot in the head Tuesday in their apartment complex. A very disturbing note filled with hate was found next to her. At 11.15 in the morning, the teen walks into the family Skyview Street home to find two things evidence of some kind of break-in in in the rear of the home and her mother in a pool of blood on the dining room floor. Next to her mother, she says, is a hateful note to the effect of, go back to your native country. Several U.S. cities' investigations are underway into possible hate crimes against Muslims. DeMarco Morgan is following this. Surveillance video shows a suspect punching, kicking, and stomping on a Muslim teenager in Brooklyn, New York. The beating took place outside a mosque during a midnight prayer service. Graphic pictures show how badly the teen and his friend were beaten. The mosque is urging police to investigate the attack as a hate crime. One of the victims says the attacker called him a terrorist as he kicked him. In Minneapolis, police are also investigating the recent shooting of two Muslim men as a possible hate crime. This weekend, authorities in Florida arrested 25-year-old Taylor Anthony Mazzanti in connection with the beating of a man outside the same mosque Orlando nightclub shooter Omar Mateen attended. You know, it's... uh, Women's hijabs are being being ripped off. off. I mean, Violence is escalating, and I'm sure he doesn't want to be... Uh, contributing to that Absolutely. yeah let's go on to the fgm the uh female general they he talks about yeah you know the female genital mutilation it's female genital mu- mutilation yeah and he talked to ian hersi ali about it and she gets labeled an islamophobe because she talks openly about the problems with the ideology mm-hmm. and she's a woman who experienced female genital mu- mutilation i mean she was that was she had to flee her country mm-hmm. and now she's here writing books and giving lectures and the the hardcore left the far left crazies are attacking her as being islamophobic yeah, yeah. and honor yeah. killings yeah. honor killing <laughs> honor killing is a real thing yeah i mean this is not this is not like an imaginary idea that's never enforced it's a real thing yeah yeah so he makes this comment and he throws in a bunch of stuff and he's like you know oh well these muslims they do female genital mutilation and uh, there's honor killings and women can't drive and just throws out a bunch of stuff and and none of this stuff is associated with islam so let's let's break it down real quick um let's talk about women not being able to drive okay hear, women aren't even allowed to drive right I mean, they have to have a male companion when they go out at night. Right. I mean, there's there's some unbelievably regressive ideas that right. are just accepted because we don't want to appear to be homophobic or, excuse they, me, Islamophobic. They, this happens in one place, one country, and that's Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia's population, in terms of Muslims, there's 1.7 billion Muslims in the world. What is Saudi Arabia's population relative to 1.7 billion? It's like less than 2%. It's like almost negligible, right? When did women uh, get banned from driving in Saudi Arabia? Like, you know, when, uh, you know, in like 60 years ago, 100 years ago, since the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, until the 1900s before the Saudi regime came in, women were riding camels and horses, whatever driving was at that time, right? So number one, you don't judge the entire Muslim population and say this is some kind of something to do with Islam, that women are not allowed to drive. Uh, number two, this is something that they were they were driving, quote unquote, whatever they were driving at the time, camels, horses, you know, uh, they were driving for 1300 years. So this is a Saudi thing. It is an, a, a Saudi Arabian cultural thing. Number three, if you ask the Muslim scholars in Saudi Arabia, do you, you know, is, is this ban on women driving? Is it Islamic or is it cultural? The scholars in Saudi Arabia will tell you, the Muslim scholars will tell you, no, it's nothing to do with Islam. It's a cultural ban. This is part of our culture. This is what we do. We practice this. They're, they're not even claiming it's Islamic. Yet, you keep getting this accusation again and again. And it's, it's almost, we keep on hearing it oftentimes. People keep quoting, well, well, women in Islam can't drive. No, women in Saudi Arabia aren't allowed to drive. 
there are 49 Muslim majority countries. That's one. The other 48 don't have any problem with women driving. So that's that's a, a non-topic. Mm -hmm. That should not be affiliated with Islam in any way, shape, or form. So it's not affiliated with Islam. I, I try to investigate what's mm. the, the, the wisdom behind it. You mm. know, is it, again, not to do with Islam, but what did they say? You know, is it something because what did they even culturally, because even when someone uh, looks into it and sees mm. like, uh, again, not to do with Islam, but culturally, why are they, is this, is why are they doing it? You know, why did they prohibit? I heard something along the line because when you go through in some places mm. where, you know, if a woman to protect her from, when she goes out somewhere in in a rural right. area in a desert, you know there was uh, highway robbers, some or something, yeah, something some like that. Protection. Yeah, some I mean, kind that, of protection. That's probably some type of the rationale behind the rationale. it. Yeah, but like as an American, right? This, this doesn't concern me so much. I mean, this is Saudi culture. Yeah, this is an internal issue. I let them deal with it. Let why? Them deal why with yeah, it. why should I be sitting here? And yeah. why should Joe be sitting here? There's so many issues in the world that we can focus on. You know, you, you right? know, you know, in India, yeah. we had some uh, guests from India. They said, look, if you eat a hamburger, cow, you go to jail. For seven years, why are you talking about that? Exactly, <laughs> so, that should make headline news. Yeah, you right? know? If, so. you, hamburger, if you eat meat because they worship the cow, yeah. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Did you hear about this? Did you know that? I no, I didn't hear about yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, women are being killed in India. Uh, young girls are being buried alive. I mean, yeah. they're being killed in China. The same thing has happened. There's so many issues to to, to bring up. But then we go and we focus on, oh well, look, Saudi Arabia is is doing this. We need to liberate the women over there. Uh, be, and somehow it's associated with Islam. Well, so first of all, it's not associated not, with Islam. Not associated with Islam. Not associated with Let's Islam. Let's go to the next one. Uh, you want to add more, something else to No, this? that's good. That's honor killings. Honor killings. So this idea just keeps being thrown out there. Oh, we have honor killings. Honor <laughs> killing. <laughs> honor killing. Is honor killings. It's very clear in the Quran. You cannot take the life that God has prohibited you to take. Life is honored, right? Except with some right. Right, unless you're impo you know, you're, you're enforcing some type of law, someone stole or co committed murder or did some type of major crime or something like that, no one is allowed to take the life of another person. Now, is honor like in, in this honor killing idea is basically you know you're, you've um, your daughter or your son goes and does something that you didn't want them to do, and you end up killing them, right? Or you end up killing someone else, and this tribe gets in a fight with another tribe. Where is this in Islam? I would love to see one verse in the Quran quoted regarding this practice. Not, there's not a single verse in the Quran. I would love to see one hadith, one statement of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him where this uh, practice is somehow justified or something. It's not. In fact, Islam forbade all of these type of killings, right? And actually put an end to it. This, this, this is a tribal practice, right? This idea of exaggerated honor and my honor has been, thing, there's no basis whatsoever. So whenever you ask someone about honor killings, Say, okay, show me some evidence. And what they're going to do is like, well, look, there was a, one Muslim a guy who was in this one country, in this one village, and he happened to do it, right? So, so there, you, there you go. One guy out of 1.7 billion people or 100 or 1,000 people out of 1.7 billion people somehow you know, makes a justification that the religion is teaching them to do that. We don't do that in America. We don't go, oh, look, there's a bunch of people that went and shot their family, they shot their parents, or their parents went and shot their kids. 25-year-old Ryan Lawrence pleaded guilty to murder charges after admitting to police he beat and burned her body before dumping her remains in the water. Lawrence told investigators he was jealous of all the attention Maddox received. McCarthy is charged with murdering the three-year-old girl the world came to know as Baby Doe. Her mother is charged with being an accessory. Prosecutors say Bella was murdered because McCarthy believed she was possessed by the devil. It's a true story. This isn't something you made up. Uh, you took a lie detector test. Yes, I did. And you're the one who insisted on taking it. Mm -hmm. You passed it, uh, telling the truth as, as far as you sleeping with your father. He says her ex-boyfriend bit off her nose. The accused ex-boyfriend, Chris Campbell, flew into a violent rage when Michelle told him their relationship was over after eight months of dating. Even a barcode, like an item in a grocery store. FBI is telling us agents have rescued more than 100 children from sex trafficking rings in cities across the country. Sexual slavery here at home, how does it still happen? And here in America, the business of sexual slavery is booming. You don't say, oh, well, that's because they're American. 
or that's because they're Christian, or that's because they're secular, or because they were liberal, or because they were conservative. We don't make these kind of you know conclusions. But when it comes to Islam, the rules somehow seem to be changing. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, we're going to make these conclusions by what some of these crazy people or these bad apples have been doing. We're going to go and blame the entire religion. And that's disingenuous. Very disingenuous. Very. Uh, and they, they bring up uh, uh, acid in the face. A Muslim country, but even in these, this country, this, these Islamic countries. It's burning me. Christy Sims slipped into a coma. Two months later, she awakened, and this is what she looked like. Against these radical fundamentalist people that are throwing acid in the face. The attack happened in daylight in downtown Vancouver, Washington. Bethany's mother describes the horrific incident. A woman approached her and said, hey, pretty girl, and she turned around and uh, she asked if she wanted something to drink, and my daughter said no. The attacker splattered acid directly into Bethany's face. Oh this lady, before we start, yeah. you say you'd known her for 10 years. Yeah. So you'd grown up with her? Yeah, we were friends since we were like about 11, 12, yeah. 21-year-old Ang Lee Mei from Phnom Penh, Cambodia, was not having it when her fiancé, 23-year-old Leng Sochiata, broke up with her. She decided it would be a good idea to try and pour acid on him while riding on the back of his motorcycle. These things are horrible, right? That, that yeah. if Islam was implemented, the, the, the Sharia or the yeah. law, and you did something like this, right. throw some acid, or you do you bring harm to a yeah. human a human being like right. this, you know, in this way, I mean, what would happen? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is really, it's it's taking advantage of people's ignorance of Islam. Exactly, yeah. Most people don't know a thing about Islam. Right. And they're like, okay, you know, let me inform you what Islam is. Instead of telling them, oh, Muslims believe in one God, and they, play, they pray five times a day, and they give charity, and they fast in the month of Ramadan, let me just teach you these things, which are some cultural practice that I found somewhere, and let me att attribute them to Islam somehow, so that you become afraid of Islam. Yeah. And that's where Islamophobia comes from. Yeah. This irrational, false fear of Islam. It's as, uh, my good friend gives this analogy, is as if uh, Martians came down to the U.S. Mm. and they wanted to know about America. Mm. And all we told them about was the electric chair, the penal system, mm. right? The electric mm -hmm. chair, you know, the firing squad right, and, right. and the, all the other uh, executions that are out there. And, and we didn't tell them all, all, all the other beautiful things. Well, there's what, what, 6,236 uh, ayahs, verses in the Quran. Mm -hmm. How much does the penal code, I mean, to run any society, any city, there's got to be laws you in gotta place. You've got to have laws. Yeah. And, and what is it, 1% or yeah, 2%? Yeah, it's a very small, significant And, and then they seem like they highlight yeah. the penal code, but forget it. about all the other forget beautiful teachings. Else. Nothing uh, else matters. Yeah, that's yeah, that's cherry-picking. Cherry-picking. Yeah, 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 that's the problem, yeah. So we got F so FGM. FGM. Honor right. killing. Nothing to do. There is no honor in taking innocent life. You cannot. There's there's no honor killings in Islam. There is no honor killing. So in Joe, Islam. Uh, right there, and his guests, and whoever brought this, he was affected. He's been. He's uh, a victim, like many have. But mm -hmm. do you want to stay a victim? Right. There's two ways to be fooled, as the saying mm -hmm. goes: to believe something that's not true, or to continue believing something, to refuse mm -hmm. to believe something that is true. So right. we're bringing Joe the facts. All right. So right. you can turn away, or if he's genuine, he can really, I think, have you on. We yeah. get someone in that area. All right. Why not? He's done over almost a thousand pot, close to a thousand podcasts. Why not bring Why out not a Muslim? He had all these yeah. Islamophobes, right? On, right. right? right. Ta talking misinformation, lies about Islam. Right. Why not have a Muslim? And that's to go. Hopefully, at the end of the show, we can have you guys push this to him, and hopefully. Uh, get to him and and he can go ahead and make an adjustment there and make things right because that's offending over 1.7 million it's not just about people say oh it's free speech mm. just freedom of speech mm. you know mm. what, what, what do you say to that i it's, mean this idea it, it's, it's hate speech it's hate right sp uh. and, and we we you know we have this conception when it comes to race we don't start using the n-word we don't start you know making fun of you know jews and their race and all of that stuff there is a certain type of speech where we should at least show some level of respect right and so this idea of hate speech, which not only is you're free to talk, you know, mention your ideas, but the way in which you mention them in terms of how much implication will there be, how much violence will be caused, how much problems will result by the way you're speaking, that that's just something that should be taken into consideration, and it is taken into consideration. Yeah. You can't, f you know, yell fire in a crowded theater and not be punished for it. So there, there are there are certain restrictions on f this idea of, of free speech that every society has to have in order to maintain some level of control. Freedom of speech is a good thing. Mm -hmm. You wanna air your views about Islam? Okay, go ahead, you know, air your views, but at least do it with proper fact-checking. 
Yeah. Do it in the right way and, and, and try to be respectful about it. You're more likely to convince other people than to just throw out your, your hatred and your anger. You know, that's yeah. there. And the best way to, to fact check also, because mm. I mentioned, you know, have so much negative propaganda. Mm. So you might fall into one of these sites that are just professional Islam bashers. They get yeah. paid for it. Yeah. Is again, to have a Muslim scholar, someone such as yourself, mm. uh, if you want someone else or whoever, we can have our brother here or we can hook you up, Joe. And we can yeah. bring someone, an expert in this area to help clear up many of these misconceptions. FGM. FGM. It's female genital mutilation. So this idea of female genital mutilation, um, so most people have probably heard about this. It's, it's cutting part of the women's private parts out or, or the entire thing or closing it or something like that. Basically, this practice began either in Sudan or Egypt, 800 BCE. 800 years before the birth of Jesus, right? What does that say off the bat? This is not something that Islam introduced. It's not something that, you know, all of a sudden Islam, which came 600 years, about 600 years after Jesus, or the Quran somehow introduced into this region. Now, where is this taking place? Primarily, it takes place in Africa, Northeast Africa, and it kind of spread across Africa. This is an African issue. So Christians are doing it there? Christians are doing it there. Let me give you some statistics here. You got uh, Eritrea, Christian country, majority Christian. You got Ethiopia, Christian country, majority, you know, Christian population. And the rates of FGM in these countries are 90% and 75%. I mean that Christians are doing it. You look at the country of Niger. Niger is an interesting case. 55% of Christians in Niger are practicing FGM. 2% of Muslims are practicing FGM. So what's, what's going on here? The Christians are doing it and the Muslims are not doing it. So what happened all of a sudden? Something flipped around. You look in Eritrea, you're looking at level three FGM, which is uh, infibulation, which is the worst type, right? It's tribal. One tribe will do it and the other tribe will not do it. You say, well, why is one tribe doing it? Because it's a cultural thing, right? All the e evidence indicates that this is a cultural thing, right? That yeah, some Muslims do, some animists are doing it. People who are like, you know, have other type of religions. Christians are doing it as well. Coptic Christians in Egypt are doing it as well, right? So this is an African issue primarily. Few other countries like Yemen, Indonesia, because, uh, you know, it has to do with demographics of how people moved into different regions and traveled. This is not an Islamic thing. This is not an Islamic problem. It's not an Islamic issue. Did the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did he have it done to his daughters? No. Were his own wives had this procedure done? No, there's absolutely no evidence whatsoever. So what it looks like is that basically, you know, what probably happened is that this was a cultural practice and the Muslims in that area were probably trying to use their religion to justify that practice, even though it's not a very strong justification. The Christians did exactly the same thing. They were had this practice as well and they tried to justify it. And what's really interesting is when Christian missionaries arrived in Africa, and people were ex you know, entering into Christianity. The Christian church, many of these Christian missionaries, they said, you guys gotta stop this practice. You gotta stop doing it, and they wouldn't stop. So they said, okay, we're gonna kick you out. We're gonna excommunicate you from our churches. You can't even be a Christian anymore if you continue this practice. And they continued it anyways, and they said, okay, fine. So many people got kicked out of the church, which means that this is a tribal thing. Are Muslims in Pakistan doing this? No. Are Muslims in Saudi Arabia? Are Muslims in Syria? Are Muslims in Lebanon? Muslims in Palestine? Muslims all across the world. Like I said, there's, there's 49 majority Muslim countries. One third of the Muslim population lives in other places as minorities. Most, the vast majority of Muslims are not doing it. You don't have any solid evidence linking this to, you know, to being a practice in Islam. Yet it keeps on being tied somehow with the religion of Islam. And I don't understand why, why this keeps happening. It's like people, whatever they can get their hands on, exactly. uh, either out of context, to twist it, to cherry pick, yeah. um, any stone they can get to throw. That's it. Uh, it's, uh, it just goes back to being disingenuous and misinformed and a victim, many mm -hmm. people, to that uh, false propaganda that's out there. Mm -hmm. but, J but Joe, our friend Joe, talks about... Um, he talks about being professionally objective. You're supposed to be professionally right. objective, professionally wise. Mm. Being wise, mm. right? Yeah. Uh, one of those things is, you know, to do what we're suggesting that he does mm. is why not have, bring on your friend, mm -hmm. 
bring on someone like you mm-hmm. and let's go let's talk let's have a, that'd be a I think that would that would really bring on a lot of lot of uh, viewership huh Absolutely. a lot of people be in tune like now he's got his his uh, buddy who's making these claims, you right. know what I mean? Right. And now we got someone who's going to fact check it right there. Let's say, right. well, that's, yeah, you don't have good. to go back to the internet on the spot Why searching not, around, right? You know, yeah. So. yeah, yeah. All right, uh, let, let's go to um, to another one mm. about the Muslims uh, being the ones responsible for the most suicide attacks. Yeah. Dad, how about the one that is responsible for most of the suicide bombings? Oh, that's so one. Islamophobic. I, I am say. Islamophobic. Yeah. Yeah. So this idea of, you know, suicide bombings and suicide killings and all that, it's important, again, to understand this in context and understand, you know, where did this start? What is the history behind it? And why do people do it? And where's the connection between Islam? There's always this, somehow this connection between Islam and suicide bombing. That's what's in the minds of many people, because that's what they consume in mainstream media, unfortunately. Let's let's take a look at some facts. OK, the first recorded suicide attack that we know of. As, as human beings, as, as researchers, was actually done by Christian crusaders against Muslims. So there was a group of crusaders who actually sunk their own ship so they could, that they could actually result in 10 times the deaths of Muslims uh, on that you know, vo- or the expedition, right? So this is the first incident, right? This is classical. Then you fast forward to like the modern era. You find the first suicide bombing, modern suicide bombing that's taking place in St. Petersburg, right? In 18, um, let's see, what's the year I got? Um, 1881, where they killed the Tsar, basically. The guy was not a Muslim. This was not a Muslim suicide bombing. And suicide bombings continued. It continues and it continues with kamikazes, so in war. You got the Japanese and what they're doing is many Japanese are volunteering themselves to get in airplanes and they go and they crash, you know, bombs into certain, you know, ships and to sing those ships. The Germans are practicing the same type of suicide bombing techniques during the battle uh, for Berlin against the Russians. So they're going and they're trying to destroy the bridges that are coming. They're sacrificing their own lives for a military purpose. And then what really happened is there really wasn't much suicide bombing during the Cold War period. That's really interesting. The reason why they're, and this is important for for everyone to understand, specifically Joe, is that the reason why there wasn't suicide bombing during the Cold War period is because the superpowers of the US and Russia, uh, Soviet Union, they're equipping these little countries that are fighting with each other, right? They're equipping them with a lot of weapons. When you have a lot of weapons to fight other people back with, you don't need suicide bombing. So then what happened was, is that we don't see much during the Cold War. The next instance of suicide bombing that we start seeing is in Lebanon. So in Lebanon, when Israel goes and occupies Lebanon in the early 80s, you get a movement of people who cannot fight back against superior military technology that Israel has. So they start getting this idea of let's go start doing the suicide bombings. What's really interesting, and this is how suicide bombing became prevalent in modern society today. It started in Lebanon particularly, and what's really interesting is 77% of the people who were engaging in suicide bombings in Lebanon, they were communists or socialists. They were not doing it for Islamic reasons. They were not doing it because, you know, they're inspired to do for some Muslim cause or something like that. And what's more interesting is 8% of them were Christian as well, right? So this is not a religious thing. This is a secular thing, meaning in, in the sense that it's something that people are doing because they have no other military option to carry out anything. And then when people saw that Israel actually backed out of Lebanon, they say, oh, well, it looks like suicide bombing's potentially working and we don't have any resources to fight back. We should do something along these lines, right? So now somehow, you know, what's going on in the world today is whenever you find a group of people, it doesn't matter if it's the Tamil tigers in Sri Lanka who are not religious, this is not a, a Muslim group. They have nothing to do with Islam at all. They were conducting suicide bombings against the government so that they could get their own Tamil region, right? Why are they doing this? This is a way for people who don't have many resources to fight back for whatever cause they're fighting for. So when you're deciding who's a terrorist and what's a terrorist and who's fighting and who's suicide bombing, the first thing you gotta ask yourself is, is this cause justified, what they're fighting for? Are they freedom fighters or are they terrorists? The second, the second thing is, do they have the ability to fight or they don't have the ability to fight back? If they don't have any weapons and they're being oppressed or they have no resources whatsoever, then yeah, they might be willing to utilize their bodies. What does all of this have to do with Islam? Absolutely nothing. 
there is absolutely nothing connected with the religion of Islam that's saying you should go and use yourself as a you know use your body as a a way of going and you know targeting a specific bomb at an individual or going and you know killing innocent civilians or all the other things that are somehow connected or tied to suicide bombing. So this idea of well, Islam is responsible for suicide bombing is just another another one of those you know just fake. Uh, misleading propaganda statements that just keeps being thrown out there and it kind of takes away the context of what is the political circumstance going on in that specific area in that country where we need to analyze is this struggle just or unjust killing of innocent civilians is never just it's never allowed in Islam but that's not even when people say suicide bomb they're not even talking about that they have a problem with the, this idea of suicide and bombing and killing or whatever it is this is a military thing, it's a political thing. In order for this to take place, there needs to be a political context. That's what needs to be kept in mind. And who I see who's substantiate academics, they don't bring them on mainstream media because it doesn't, doesn't support the narrative. No. And it would educate the public yeah. to you know the the awareness of really what's going on in these er, in these areas of the world that Robert Pape, you know, the terrorist expert, yes. he analyzed over a thousand uh, different terrorist attacks to date and he talks about a this has little to nothing to do with islam or uh, religion a lot of yeah. times he said that many of these are secularists he says mm -hmm. and people are about to do a suicide attack mm -hmm. and now they're going to face death and all of a sudden they become religious right right mm -hmm. because that's it now people right. find god at the end right and now they right. they cling on to it right. but in reality it's because they want the occupying force mm -hmm. out of there and like you're saying they have mm -hmm. no other means right it, uh, and again did anything to do with islam now yeah, no, it's it's all political. It's political. It's, it's political. That's exactly what the terrorist expert, Dr. Robert Payne, that, an academic what, from the what University every, of Chicago that's says. That's what every terrorist expert says, that, you know what, there's a political, you know, objective that's there. You need to justify that objective. You're going to you're gonna justify it either with nationalism, Nazi party, neo-Nazi, whatever it is. You're going to justify it with some religion that you practice. You're going to justify it with your superiority of your race. You need to justify the political objective. Some people will use religion to justify it. Some people will use nationalism. Some people will use race. They'll use other you know, factors. If there's no political objective, then there's not going to be any terrorism. In my opinion, it's injustice, humiliation, oppression that is are the most common causes of terrorism. Some people claim that religion motivates terrorists. However, the academic research of Dr. Robert Pape has proved the claim to be false. Uh, what I did is I collected the first complete database of every suicide terrorist attack around the world since 1980. Uh, the first version of this database uh, uh, was uh, uh, published uh, a few years ago and it went from 1980 to 2003. Think of that as like the pre-Iraq database. And then the second version from 2004 uh, on, think of that as the data that's happened since Iraq. Um, and what the data shows quite clearly is that uh, the principal cause of suicide terrorism is foreign occupation. In that period from 1980 to 2003, there were 315 completed suicide terrorist attacks by 462 suicide terrorists who actually killed themselves. I don't mean attempts. These are people who actually killed themselves. The world leader during that 24-year period was not an Islamic group at all. They are the Tamil Tigers in Sri Lanka. The Tamil Tigers are a Marxist group a secular group, a Hindu group. In fact, over half of those 462 suicide attackers were purely secular. Because you see, many uh, Muslim suicide terrorist groups are also pure, purely secular, such as the PKK in Turkey. The PKK in Turkey, which did uh, numerous suicide attacks in the 1990s, uh, is again a Marxist, read, anti-religious, suicide terrorist group. Because you see, if Islam as uh, sort of a radical religion or if it were just radical Muslims uh, doing this, then what you would expect is sort of this thin veneer of suicide attack kind of scattered all around the world. Uh, you would expect that, oh, there's 1.4 billion Muslims. You know, there's this teeny tiny fringe of Muslims kind of everywhere who'd be willing to do suicide attack. Uh, but that's not the way the data looks. It's really concentrated and it's really concentrated in occupations. Yeah.
So I wonder, like, people like Joe or whoever, you know, to get criminals out or get, get people who've taken over his backyard. Maybe he's got a few acres, right? <laughs> yeah. And they're bringing harm upon his family, mm. killing somebody. He's got a big family. Mm. You know, what, what would, again, Islam doesn't justify killing innocent men, women, and children. That's clear. Mm. But what would many of these people end up doing to, you can imagine, we have guidelines. There's guidelines in guidelines, Islam, yeah. right? That keeps you know, us in check. Keeps and that, us that's in important. check. Yeah. Imagine if, if people don't have any if guidelines. They don't, which they don't. Imagine what they what oh, these, what the people be doing. Absolute chaos. Yeah. Yeah. We 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 are uh, we got a, a few more. We're gonna take a break, um, uh, and we'll be back uh, to keep addressing some of these, um, some of the mis much of the misinformation is too much to cover. But we're just giving a few of them here on the show, and hopefully our good friend we can have him on the program. He can come even on the Dean show. Or we can reach out and have our friend Shay Mustafa from the College of California, California Islamic University. Yeah, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. We got uh, some some more exciting things to cover. Be right back. Peace, Islamic. Welcome back to the Dean Show, and this is our sincere, genuine attempt to reach out to people such as Joe Rogan, has a massive following one of the probably number one podcasts out there in the world. Mm -hmm. And people who have been on his program, fans of his, kind of get them acquainted with the Muslims mm -hmm. and some of the false propaganda. And, and and the genuine people will be like, people don't like being lied to. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So when you're when you're lied to, you're like, what else have I been lied to, right? Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of things out there, misinformation, and it's just sad to say, I mean, um, uh, Joe, like many, have fallen victim to the Islamophobia machine. Imagine if, if a quarter million dollars plus mm. is being spent mm. on bashing Islam, creating mistruths and misinformation, mm. you're going to get affected by it. That's, uh, that's right. Yeah. Let, let's continue going on to, to another one. He talks about the stoning of homosexuals. How many of you believe that the Word of God is the best way to deal with homosexuals and that what whatever the Quran says, whether they, it says they should be stoned to death. At the yeah, he mentioned uh, the Quran says to stone homosexuals. I mean, I would just say to Joe, I would, I would love to see that verse because uh, I've studied the Quran for over 15 years, 6,236 verses. Never came across that one. So I don't know which Quran he's looking at. I'm not sure which one he's going to, but I would love to see where that where it says that because I I missed it and I think every other Muslim in the entire world missed it. You know. Yeah. So there's there's no stoning of the of uh, in the Quran of homosexual. No. The only time it talks about homosexuality in the Quran is in the story of Prophet Lot. Uh, it doesn't talk about any other rules with regards to homosexuals in the Quran. So I'm not sure where exactly he's getting that. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's go into women being silent, not being yeah. allowed to talk. And like he, he goes into this thing about how many of you think that women should be silent and that they should, you know, should listen to their man because this is what God has said. And they all raise their hand. And he's like, see, this is, this is not radical Islam. This is just Islam. Right. So all these people that say, oh, they're so radical, they're radical Islam. And like he doesn't even realize right. that he's a d demonstrating radical Islam. So he, yeah, he said, that, again, he said the Quran says that women are not allowed to talk in front of men. They have to be silent. Um, so again, I, I don't know where he got this from the Quran. Um, there's something similar to that in the Bible. Okay, let's see what happens when we read some verses from the Bible to people here at West. Islam has been under constant scrutiny, and Muslims are being accused of following a religion that has no place in our Western culture. We would like to read a few random passages from the Quran and see if you agree. If you adhere my laws and reject my commands, you will have to eat the flesh of your own daughters and your own sons. Do not allow for a woman to teach. If two men sleep together, you will have to kill them. See, this is actually not the Holy Quran. This is actually the Holy Bible. If she does, you have to cut off her hand and do not forgive her. That's the Holy Bible. Right. Why would that be in the Holy Bible? Is this surprising? Yes, 100%, because you would never think terrible stuff like that would be in the Holy Bible. That That's ridiculous. There's there's no way that's the Bible. I, I, I've read the Bible. There's that stuff not in there, no. But if you were a Muslim reading the Holy Bible, do you think Christians would be radical? Yes, 100%. Yeah. But definitely not in the Quran. Um, so uh, maybe he mis mistake, 
mistook the two books. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Mm -hmm. But this idea of, you know, women being silent or them not being allowed to talk, this is just just throwing it seems like he's throwing out a bunch of random stuff i mean there's an there's a surah a chapter in the quran it's called mujadila it's about a woman who came and complained to the prophet muhammad peace be upon him about her husband and god allah puts this in the quran the story like praising the woman that she had the courage to go and complain and that her husband was wrong what he was doing was wrong and she was right so like if it's if it's telling them to be silent, why is why is the Quran showing this story and saying, hey, here you go, you can check it out. It's called Surah Mujadila, the one who complained or the woman who complained. Um, it's it's near the end of the Quran. There's an entire chapter on that, and there's there's nothing like this. I'm not I don't know where this stuff is coming from or what sources they're coming from. I think the fact checking really needs uh, some work there. And maybe maybe this is in the show. There's, is there another guy in the back? Yeah, like double checking the facts. But they, you, you know, know what? Maybe should, that guy they, should, you know needs to. He needs yeah. to hook up with again with a qualified Islamic scholar or exactly, source exactly, and they get you on the phone. Say, hey, look, yeah. we're right now we're doing this up. But what do you think, that, guys? It, that, <laughs> I, I, and I'm ready for that. Yeah. You know, that's the problem with Google. You know, I mean, the thing is, Google's great service, but you just throw in some things. There's something called SEO. SEO, I'm a computer science major as well. Yeah. So it's called search engine optimization. So if you use the right tags and use the right thing and use enough, you pay the right people, they can get your results up in the search engine. So you're trying to search something, all the false articles with the propaganda and the misleading statements and all of that, they will be at the top. And that's what you said, this Islamophobia industry, is over $200 million is being invested in all of this stuff. A lot of it is search engine optimization. So when you're trying to do your own research, you're going to get all these results coming in the beginning and you got to like get through it. You need to go to Google Scholar instead of just Google. Yeah. Right? There's an there's a academic research. You need to go and check with Muslim scholars. You need to look at their scholarly research papers to actually find this stuff and what's really going on. You kind of have to you know, sift through it a little bit if you've been kind of programmed that way. Along with the uh, quote I mentioned from Time Magazine, mm -hmm. that's also the 60,000 plus books over a span of 100 years. Yeah. That's probably not those same arguments that that are the false arguments, the no, the misconception, they're all put on the internet also, I'm sure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but don't we have, is that a, a situation where you also had now from one of, one of um, the predecessors of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, uh, Omar, uh, where a woman, he was, he, was, um, he was stating something and a woman got up. He was said, giving a sermon. Yeah. Yep. She got up. They didn't she, like. She got up said, in the sit middle. Sit down, woman. She Shut got your up mouth. in the no. middle of the sermon. Yeah. Right. Which you're not even supposed to. No one's supposed to talk in the middle of the sermon. But she was correcting him on something. She, I, she got up and she's like, "I gotta correct you." She fact checked him. She fact checked him. Yeah. And he's the leader of. We're talking the, the Muslim world at the time, which is stretching, you know, throughout the Persian Empire, Roman Empire. I mean, this was a major thing. It's a political leader. You try this on some other people and, you know, you see what happens to you, let alone being a woman, you know. So yeah. we have that history. But she was fact-checking based on evidence. On that's the Quran, right. Yeah. Not just, you know, and he know, admitted yeah. it. And yeah. that's the beautiful thing. You know, that's the beautiful thing about Omar. He admitted it. He didn't say, I'm not going to take this advice from a woman or she interrupt me during, interrupted me during my sermon. He realized that what she was saying was correct. And he said, my, you know, she, she quoted a verse of the Quran that he didn't really reflect upon at the time. And, and she's like, you know, he's like, you know, you're absolutely right. I, I, I forgot, you know, the woman is right and I'm wrong. And he, he declared it publicly. Yeah. And that's the beauty of, you know, that, that, that humility. When you realize you're wrong about something, you realize you said something you know, incorrect, you're willing to make that adjustment. So, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter who's correcting me. If I value the truth, I'm going to, you know, be willing to accept that I yeah. made a mistake. So. And that's interesting because you do have, and again, uh, our, our, our friends out there from the Christians and Jews, and I, I never want to, intentions never to, to uh, put down anyone's religion or anything, but you do have uh, an aspect of, of a community there that are deliberately trying to confuse people, spread this false information, and some of his guests th that have been on there. So why, and I think a part of it was inbreeding. Uh, this, this is your own theory. No, no, no. Look at Someone up. else Muslims has a theory? and inbreeding, major, major problem. I've never heard this before. Especially with immigrants in Britain, huh. like the Pakistanis in London. They're, they're part of a media program and they constantly have um, attacks on Islam. Akbar! Akbar! Greetings, infidel. I work with care. I want Sharia law in this country. Women are second-class citizens. 
I hate white males. Am I liberals or am I Islam? And his friend, who's actually a Catholic Christian. It's all the same now. And others, um, he was on his show. This would apply, these verses would apply if you're, because this is part of the New Testament, about mm. being quiet, not mm. speaking in public, mm. not teaching in public, covering your hair, all of these things. So it's like you're attacking Muslims, but th these, these it's people, in your own would, book. Yeah. it's in your own book. These right. would be Christians who are, who are totally Islamophobic. This, mm. not everyone. You have so many Christians right, who are out right, there who right, are, course, you know, so. guarding Muslims from praying. Absolutely. You know, we have uh, great alliances, you know, with some great people out there. Mm. But these people, I think, who have more in common with such radical fringe elements is like, it's like they're the new version, the upgrade of the KKK. Exactly. Right? They, yeah. they have more in common with, they actually agree more with ISIS. That's right. You know what That's I mean? Right. They're very similar. Yeah. So now they don't see what their own book is saying. Yep. And we yep. can play this all day now at night. We can yep. start throwing these verses and explain this one. Yeah. Yep. Explain that one. And, th and that's the hypocrisy of it. You know? Hypocrisy. I mean, e e even if we had those verses, which we don't, but if we had those verses, then you have the same verses. So if you say, well, you know, well, ours aren't taken literally, because that's normally the answer. We don't take that literally. So why do you have to take ours literally then, mm -hmm. right? But but it's not the case. Yeah. But that, that's where the hypocrisy comes in, and that's a problem. People should understand where they themselves are coming from before, and you know, clean yourself up before you start criticizing you know other people. Yeah, L let's move along. So we covered that one. This guy, I just don't know. It's just yeah, it's just mind blowing. Uh, his guest, Joe's guest, who he has on the Joe Rogan podcast. I don't who is this guy he he starts talking about you know about uh, muslims treatment towards jews mm. right and there i've i've we've had uh, programs on this in the past well let me just cover this clip first uh what is the position on uh, islam regarding jews okay well i mean we escape lebanon because we we're going to be executed okay by it wasn't by the Amish, okay? Right. Uh, so I said, you know what? Rather than kind of go into a whole treatise, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share with you a montage of imams from around the world. So this is not culture-specific. There's an Indonesian imam, a Malaysian, Kuwaiti, Yemeni. So these are at their sermons. This is at the mosque where they are preaching what should be done to the Jews. And one of the particular uh, imams was showing images of the Nazis bulldozing uh, skeletons into the ditches and he was lamenting to God why God wouldn't, didn't you give us the pleasure of exterminating those Jewish rats why do you hate us so much those Jewish rats uh, some version of that right so he picked some random you see what he's saying that mm. uh, some imam somebody what, what do you what do you say to that yeah I mean this is the, what you do is you cherry pick some random quote-unquote imam making some statement somewhere and say, see, look, look, there's a, a Muslim somewhere who has some type of following, oh, 10 people, 100 people, we don't even know. And look, he said something wrong. Um, yeah, there's like people like that around the entire world who say really ridiculous things. The former chief Shephardic rabbi of Israel has just proclaimed that the only reason that you, as a non-Jew, exists on earth is to serve Jews. Another Jewish religious leader says it's moral for a Jew to murder you and steal your heart or liver if a Jew needs one. Now maybe you think I'm making all this up, but I tell you, Jewish extremist evil is too crazy for anybody to make it up. Now you probably haven't heard the rabbi's words yet. He's not on Fox News. CNN doesn't cover it, but it has been covered extensively in Israel, just not America. Of course, Rabbi Yosef is right. Most Gentiles do serve the Jews. We fight their wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, spill the blood of tens of thousands of our young men, and suffer terrible injuries and death to those nations. We spend the treasure of trillions of dollars in these wars for Israel. I believe that there is an honor in you that will not allow you to be a slave to anyone, much less to such an evil power as Zionism. Even some courageous Jews are joining the fight against Jewish extremism, and I salute them. Right, in all religions and in non-religions as well, you know. So this is the problem, is that, you know, you go and cherry pick something and you say, oh, well, that's, you know, that somehow represents what all 1.7 billion Muslims are saying. 
that's that's again very disingenuous that's the problem is that you're not being honest with people mm -hmm. and you're misleading them to think that all muslims believe this thing because one person said it okay what is their basis for saying it is there any basis in the religion our religion is based upon the quran and the teachings of the prophet muhammad peace be upon him did he exhibit those things or did it contradict what he's teaching none of that stuff is there you know so when it came to the idea of uh you know um this how Muslims treat Jews or how Islam is supposed to be dealing with with Jewish people and all of that. This idea is is is, is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You know that that um, Muslims have been living with Jews in many parts of the world, specifically in Spain. Uh, you know, in the past, when you know Muslims were actually in control of Spain for like eight hundred years, Muslims and Jews were living there peacefully. There was no major issues. Muslims and Jews were living peacefully in the Ottoman Empire. Um, in fact, when the Jews were kicked out of Europe. Most of them were going to the Ottoman Empire, and they said that you know they were uh, they were flourishing at that time. In Spain, it was their golden age. So relations between Muslims and Jews, outside of you know ho some hostile political context, has always been generally fine, and yeah. it's still the case generally outside of any political context. Where's this idea of hatred from Jews? And because of some imam quoted something, right? Mm -hmm. We can go and we can start showing clips of Christian preachers. Chabad calls non-Jewish women shiksas. Shiksa literally means whore, and it calls Gentile girls shikselba, or little whores. Now, can you imagine the outrage of Gentiles or any Christians called Jewish girls little Jewish whores? But they do this all the time, in the media, in fact. Oh, sure, they're Jewish and you're a shiksa. What? It means non-Jewish woman. From Catholics, from Protestants, we could show Jewish uh, rabbis saying some something. Every Gentile member of Congress voted to honor this freak who says that every Gentile and every Gentile congressman is totally evil and every one of their wives and mothers, daughters is a whore. Now that's true slavery. When you vote to honor somebody who says your mother is a whore and who tells you that your sole purpose on earth is to serve we superior Jews. We can go and show atheists. We can go and show agnostics. We can go and show UFC fighters, right? Which Joe was, you know, uh, MMA. We can show a bunch of MMA people making ridiculous statements. Are you going to go and say, look, this represents all MMA fighters? Hey, hey, USC, wake up, USA. Go, go back for you, go. Go for Jesus. No forget Jesus people. No. Joe wouldn't think that. Yeah. No one else would think that. So you don't do that. You don't go pick a few bad people, make their statements, and then say, well, see, this looks represents everyone, you know? So now your audience is, is, is getting a picture portrayed to them like Muslims hate Jews, yeah. Islam teaches hatred of, you know, Jews, and now uh, that incites, like, these guys, I know, and now you're hearing acid in the face, you're hearing female genital, female genital mutilation, mm -hmm. honor, kill. Man, I had a guest the other day. He said, "I watched Fox News. I got my PhD thesis in, in, um, in, 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 in what was it? Uh, in one area, I forgot what it was." And he said, "You know, it was making my blood pressure go up mm. listening to, and I know the facts. Right. So imagine someone is listening to all this. Mm. People are generally good people, mm. and they're you're dehuman, dehumanizing them, mm. and you don't have the facts. But when you facts check, you know, if mm. you look at it's one thing us saying this, yeah. but when you have in the in the Jew Jewish Chronicles, when you have professor, academics, historians like uh, this professor, Jewish professor David Warnstein, he wrote the JC essay, and he says Islam saved Jewry, the Jew the Jewish people. Mm. There's a great a rabbi out there, um, Rabbi Singer, mm. and he talks about the Jews had it better than a in any other place, mm. uh, no, no better place than they were when, when in the Muslim lands. Yeah, and I've studied all my life. The rabbinical school from A to Z, I come from the most traditional, what's called black hat world, okay? My father is a great teacher at Rosh Hashiva. I don't, I come from the traditional world. We all have our nut jobs. All the crazy, we have crazy Jews, wackos, and we have crazy Christians, and we have crazily Muslims. We all have our nut jobs. Welcome to the, welcome, welcome to the show. And they're good people. They're so sweet. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the people I interact with. I'm not saying the head of ISIS is sweet. They're maniacs. ISIS went and came here to Jakarta to kill Muslims. I mean, they're 
they're wicked what they're doing. And they abuse these texts in the Quran and the Hadith to, in order to kill people and rape women and so on. And all Muslims, I mean, all majority of Muslims condemn this. But so I'm, I'm talking about people who are serious, who really care about God, who care about the truth, who recognize there's a problem. I'm talking to you. Everyone else, you don't have to listen to the show. Shut her off and go somewhere else. I don't mean that disrespectfully, but if you can't separate the two, then you're going to be in la-la land. If I read other news, I'll think that all Muslims are a bunch of baby killers so and drive planes into buildings. Forget that garbage, okay? That's nonsense. Let's talk facts now. And this is why Jews got along with Muslims beautiful, not with Christians. My family was wiped out by the, by the holo, in, in the Holocaust. Wiped out. Almost, I mean, just by luck, my great-grandfather came to America, went back, and then and my grandfather and grandmother came when they were able to come, but there, everybody was wiped out. My, I think 42 members of my family were wiped out by the Nazis, may they perish in hell. But those were all Christians. They were, they were, and don't tell me the Nazis weren't Christians. Believe me, they had the belt buckle on the Waffen SS, Gottmittons, and if you, whatever. I don't want to get into that point, but it, it did not happen in Islamic countries. Okay, the Holocaust did not happen in Islamic countries. It happened in Europe. Europe, either directly, Europeans directly or passively murdered the Jews, wiped out all of European Jewry. One third of the Jews were, dist- were wiped out between 1942 and 1945. But Jews were safe in the Arab world. Now, with the whole thing in the Middle East, yes, there's problems now. But... What do you want to do? You want to go throw gasoline on a fire? And when, when the Quran is critical of Jews, they're critical of Jews, believe me, if you read Ezekiel and the criticism of Ezekiel to Jews who weren't keeping Torah, the criticism found in the Quran, Lahabdil, doesn't touch Ezekiel 23 or 16. It doesn't come close. It's much, the Jewish Bible is much more critical of the Jews. Any Muslim who really sincerely studies Judaism really studies it, not propaganda on some dumb website. You know what I'm talking about. Because on the same dumb websites, you have the crazy websites say that Muslims are a bunch of suicide bombers that kill people, and I'm not even to these filthy dogs say this. So I'm not talking about the crazies. But the serious, serious people, one of the things that both Jews who study Islam or Muslims who study Judaism go, whoa, we're, we are, the, I mean, it's shocking how similar we are. We are not exactly the same. Let's get that clear. In the old days, before, you know, the state of Israel and so on, there were crazies who persecuted Jews. But frankly, there is a reason why Jews in the Islamic world, whether it was in Yemen or in Morocco, did fabulous. We did better than the Muslims did. The Muslims were killing each other, and the Jews were were doing great. Now, were there exceptions? Yes. How did we get along so well? My friends, there is a reason why Jews and Muslims got along better in Yemen, got along better in Morocco, got along better in Egypt, got along better in Iraq than Muslims and Muslims did when they were unfortunately killing each other over what? Over primarily politics. You know, Albania, how many did it, did, uh, after the Holocaust, you know, how many Jews were taken in by the Ottomans, by the, by the, by the Albanians, yeah. you know, by the Muslims. Mm-hmm. You also have my good friend, Miko Pillid, mm. who's a strong advocate, you know, for the, because all this stems really uh, for the, the, the theft of the, the, uh, the Palestinians' land, mm. right? This yeah. comes from that, but yeah. before this that. This modern conflict. But you have know. Jews, my friends, my Jewish friends, Rabbi Weiss, you know, mm-hmm. who's been on the show.
mm -hmm. my uh, Israeli friend, Miko Pillet, he's been on the show. When you take away people's land and you destroy their homes, when you incarcerate their fathers and quite often their mothers, uh, when you shoot their brothers and sisters in, the, in their school, in the schoolyards, this is what we get. This is the price that you pay as, as, a, as a society that maintains such a brutal oppression and occupation against another people. There's a price to be paid and this is the price that we pay and therefore they both felt um, that uh, they both held the Israeli government responsible because the Israeli government is responsible for the reality that exists there. Now someone just said that's an anti-Semitic statement you just made. Somebody's pointing the finger and say this guy's anti-Semitic. What do you have to say about that? Well, I'm Jewish, so being anti-Semitic is nonsense. Number <laughs> yeah. one. Number two, being anti-Semitic means being racist against Jews. I'm not racist against Jews. Um, but I am critical of the state of Israel. I'm critical of Zionism, which has really nothing to do with Jews, um, although they claim to. So there's nothing anti-Semitic about criticizing Israel. In fact, most Jews don't even live there. Uh, most Jews never accepted Zionism. So I don't think there's th th that has anything to do with it. And it's a claim that's being thrown out when there's nothing else to say. When the other side, the pro-Israeli side, the side that supports the violence in Palestine uh, has nothing to say, they say anti-Semitic. Well, so they say anti-Semitic. What if uh, someone says, look, you, he's just a self-hating Jew. Have you heard this statement? Yeah, well, I certainly don't hate myself. <laughs> so that's nonsense. <laughs> yeah. And I don't hate anybody else. I think it's, again, it's one of those things they throw at you when, they're, when they've got no argument. Mm -hmm. And these people, they love Muslims. They get along. With, they, they tell the facts, a totally different story, right. an academic story. Mm -hmm. But what is this story? Yeah. This story that these guys, he's picked some, some, some rotten plum out here. And he, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Unfortunately. What is that? Is that genuine or genuine? What, what are you going to say? Absolutely. That's, 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 uh, that's why it's important to have a variety of guests yeah. and have a variety of opinions. That's yeah. the only way to arrive at the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's let's move on. So he talks about women now, mm. women uh, and women being forced to cover. That's true. But if it's some imam who thinks that you know women should cover themselves up like they look like Jabba the Hutt or what is it? Was it Boba Fett? Whichever one, whatever please, it is. Please it's, direct your hate mail to Joe Rogan. Come it, bring it on. <laughs> mm. And he has a problem yeah. with that. Yeah, you know the, the language that he uses. The language. That's the thing. The yeah, language. That's that's the thing. I mean, he says. I mean, he's making fun of Muslim women who are choosing to cover their hair because one, it's a religious requirement, and two, they're doing it out of modesty. They're they're not the first people in the past or even today who cover out of modesty. They're women women wear hijab when they go outside of the house. I mean, I mean, <laughs> who are not even Muslim? Can you equate that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, they're, people aren't walking around naked. Yeah, exa exactly. They, they're covering themselves. There's a type of modesty that's there, right? But he's going and saying, you know, they're dressed like Jabba the Hutt. You know, I, I didn't really get that example. Then he corrected and said, "Oh, then the dress like Boba Fett." Not That's really. Not cool. Man. Not really. It's, it's not. It's That's not. not cool. it's, it's not cool. You know. So and especially not in the current climate. Yeah. Where you know you got France just passed a law that forbade Muslim women from wearing their quote unquote burkini, which is like you know their hijab uh, that they're gonna go and swim and the beach with. It's forbidden. They're not allowed to even practice that. You want to talk about freedom of religion or freedom, you know, to criticize or all that freedom that we, we keep hearing about. They can't even go to the beach. They're not. You're not allowed to dress how you want to dress, right? And then to make fun of them and use some Star Wars figures and all of that stuff. It's it's not cool at all. When bullying is you know? an epidemic now. Yeah, it's it's a major epidemic. It's and huge. Specifically, Muslim women yeah. who are being bullied. I mean, there are bullying's not cool. Man. It's happened to many of my friends. I know personally, my my wife's friends. They go out in the supermarket. People not only give them stares, they actually like shout insults at them. You know, why are you wearing that rag over your head? Why are you doing this? They, they don't even feel comfortable going to the grocery store. And this is not some exaggerated feeling. This is fact-based, right? Muslim women have had their hijab ripped off from them. And this is not an isolated incident. This is happening on a major, you know, significant level. So just throw it off and say, you know what? Well, we have the freedom to criticize your religion, but you don't have the freedom to dress how you want to dress. You have to adopt our understanding, our principles of what modesty or of what, what freedom of dress should be like, right? That's exactly the type of narrow-mindedness that he's criticizing in all these other aspects. So you got to be consistent. Yeah. You have to be consistent in what you're saying. There was a Jewish, another Jewish uh, academic, and this is interesting. This is what he said, Dr. Norman Fickelstein. He said, when Europeans came to North America, the thing they said about the Native Americans was that they were so barbaric because they walked around naked. The European women at that time, they were wearing three layers of clothes. 
Then they came to North America and decided that the Native Americans were backward because they wa all walked around naked. And he continues and he says, and now we walk around naked and we say that the Muslims are backward because they wear so, so much so much clothes. Can you imagine anything more barbaric, banning m women from wearing headscarves? So this is a Jewish man, yep. right? Absolutely. Who's got, you know, who who's has uh, friends with Muslims, we're friends with him. I mean, mm -hmm. these are people working together to some obvious facts. What right. do you think about that? So he's talking about when they came over, right. they were wearing pretty much hijab. Yep. <laughs> if you look Ex at the pictures. E exactly, exactly. Right? Yep. And they were walking around naked, now they're trying to... Exactly. Yeah. That, that, that's really the problem. The, co the crux of this problem is this holier-than-thou attitude. Yeah. Right? It's like, you know, looking at them, these are less, you know less people than us that they're lesser than us they're uncivilized they are backwards in one of his you know things he said uh him or one of his guests said islam is 500 years behind what is that supposed to mean mm -hmm. like this idea of well we've changed our cultural norms we started dressing a different way we've even changed our morals um and now you you guys are behind now you know you should be following exactly what we what we're doing we set the trends and if you don't follow the trend then you're backwards, you're behind, you yeah. need to catch up. This this idea, this is like that Orientalism idea that you know Edward Said was mentioning in his book, um, kind of deconstructing this idea of people who are in a position to go and like classify others into a certain frame, thinking that you need to be like us. We, you're uncivilized, we're civilized, we need to come and civilize you. There needs to be a little bit more nuance than that when we're trying to understand people. And Joe's a bright guy. I mean, he mentions when he starts to think objectively, like he says, professionally, wisely, and he sees like, and he mentions this about why, why would people be doing some of the things, right? Mm -hmm. um, and he talks about their natural resources being stolen. Mm -hmm. He talks about the dehumanization. Mm -hmm. And 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 yeah, that, 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 that's what really gave me hope. You know, when I saw yeah. when I saw him talking about that in this clip, to the suppression of the people that live in these places where their natural resources are being stolen in the, by the war machine, right. which is undeniable, undeniable. What's going on in Iraq or in Afghanistan? How much of it? How much of the hustle has to do with the natural resources? Right. Whether they be the poppy fields, whether they be the minerals in Afghanistan, whether it's the oil in Iraq, undeniable that these people are being sure. For, for sure, they're subject to the war machine that's coming in to steal the resources. Right. And that, that, that's, that's something that people are aware of. And you see these images of these people in these Islamic countries that are dying, that are getting bombed on. And, and also the dehumanism that they're subjected to by a lot of people that are trying to justify this, the, right. these wars. That, that is the only thing that makes sense to me. He's like, yeah, okay, I, I, I understand. Muslims uh, around the world, their resources are being taken from them. They're being oppressed. They're being dehumanized. He says, we're not going to deny what's happening in Iraq, what's happening in Afghanistan. It's horrible what's happening. And then he kind of hints at the answer that he's almost there. He almost figures out why Islamophobia is a problem, why we shouldn't be you know, doing all this disrespect and all of that. But then right when he's there and he's saying, you know, that could play a role, then his guest, you know, somehow diverts him and takes him off on some other tangent. And then that thought is just gone. So I think I think Joe is is searching and I think he's trying to find out. But he's just it's like someone who has a, a problem, an addiction or whatever they're trying to get rid of. But all the friends around them, they keep reinforcing that behavior. And even though they're trying to get out, until they kind of clear their way from those friends and try and associate with other people, and spend a little bit time with others, they're not going to be able to get out because they're always being sucked back into that bad habit that they have. When you blow up people back into, you know, time, I mean, you put, you, you like he said, Joe says, you know, you steal their resources. Uh, you do all sorts of injustices towards them, and now you're criticized. These countries, Afghanistan, uh, you have um, Iraq, that just been blown to smithereens. How do you? And then puppets been put. You know, they've been colonized. You mm -hmm. know, puppets been put as as to to run those countries. Uh, what I mean, wh how how far far forward do you expect them to be when you you've like blown everything up? That's true. <laughs> what do you want? That's, that's true. You know. Yep.
Yeah, you know, it, that is it. It's uh, and then and then at the end to try to blame Islam when you burn all. I mean, if you blown up their libraries, yeah, you took the libraries, <laughs> stole the artifacts. You know, <laughs> you know, it's crazy stuff going on. Yeah, no, the, the how, how they keeping people saying there is Islam. Exactly. Keeping people. That's what led to the destabilization of the entire region. I mean, it's it's much worse than it was before. Mm -hmm. You know, so complaining with you know the false pretext of supposed biological weapons and all yeah. that, and that all turned out to be false. I mean, that's the importance of fact check. Yeah. Again, right? If if someone would have if if some people would have done their proper fact checking, all these people would not have been killed in Iraq. They should not have been killed in the first place because yeah. the whole pretext of invading Iraq was about these f chemical biological weapons that never existed. And in fact, our data was not even accurate on that. It was just a it was a lie. It was a, it was a lie. So, so it was built. It was it, the premise was built on a, what we know today was a right. lie. And I'm sure I'm sure Joe and most people would accept it. This is very clearly now come out to the public that this was a lie. And this pretext was completely made up. It's completely fake based on flimsy information. And then you have conservative numbers what do they put it at you have uh, physicians for what, what are they, physicians for social responsibility something like that where they talk about almost in a span of 10 years like almost 2 million yeah. innocent yeah. lives were lost yeah. on a war that was built based on a lie based on a lie yeah. yeah there was a have you seen a it's a great documentary by really respected investigative journalist it's called dirty wars Yes. Have you seen yes, that? Yes, I have seen that. Yes. People need to see that. They need to see that. Absolutely. You know, they show. Did you see the part? The guy's just sitting, and he he worked as a translator for the for the army for the Americans, and then and then what happens uh, in one part of the documentary, Dirty Wars? They're just hanging out. The guy just got married. Now, put people. They have to put themselves in the situation. Yeah. The guy just got married, and they heard some you know helicopters, whatever. And then he goes outside, and I don't know him, his son, and how many other people just killed. Just killed. They were just enjoying themselves. Yeah, they're just dead. Yeah. So this the people have been dehumanized. That's the thing. We don't. We don't. We don't hear their stories. They're, they're not seen as people. They're just seen as a just a target. And okay, yeah. they're just numbers. Yeah. One million, two million, half a million. It's just a number for most people, unfortunately. And all based on, and Joe's an objective person, and he, many of these uh, events that have happened, such as 9-11 and, and whatnot, he's had people like the uh, uh, people who want a new investigation on 9-11. On mm. And he's someone who doesn't just swallow this stuff whole, you mm. know, believing it. His guest mm. talks about these guys who did 9-11. Tower so, Seven so is now, unquestionably so, one of the hardest things to yeah, answer. So, so you just gotta just like a detective. You gotta look at it like a detective. You got, you got. Okay, that building came down. So, we the people want to know uh, what happened at Tower Seven. How come it looks like a demo? It looks like it exploded. It looks, look, it, it must be exploded. That's the conspiracy theory. What does the government say? Nothing. It's not in the 9/11 Commission report. They deny it. There's no. There's. They don't say anything. They don't acknowledge it. After public pressure of wanting to know if. Uh, that was a controlled demo or not. We want a real investigation. Finally, in 2008, they fi NIST finally came out. A government agency comes out, and, he's, and they ask him. They go, what? He gives a little presentation that Tower 7 uh, was brought down because it got too hot. And then the, he starts fielding questions, and they said, ha, why didn't you guys test for explosives? This is what this is all about. You know what he said? The answer was, there were no witnesses that said they heard explosions. That was his answer. And there's uh, endless, endless video after Someone's video, make a meme after, video endless. after video, after video, after video, firemen, policemen, witness after witness after witness after witness after witness. After witness, after witness. There's all on video, all on video, right when it happens. And, and then the bombs went off. And then before that plane, and then bombs were just, and then the whole lobby was just bombs. And then we turned around, we were going down the elevator, and the elevator blew up. And this, everyone's saying bombs. The, the newscasters are saying while they're there, they're going, everyone's saying bombs are going off everywhere. Every, they took all that and buried it. They were saying, there's all this. They said, NIST, it's on video. They're saying, we didn't have any. They go, you didn't check for explosives? They go, no, we didn't check for explosives. There was no witnesses that said they heard explosions. Now, I'm not going to get into, you know, the over uh, two or close to 3,000 architects and engineers, you know, that are calling for reinvestigation, family members and whatnot. I'm a family member trying to find out the answers to the murder of 3,000 plus people. Please look at architects and engineers, people all around the world, scientists, 
all around the world are questioning this. It took some kind of consciousness raising on my part before I was willing to look at the, the possibilities. And really, you need to go where the evidence leads. As an engineer, I have three degrees in engineering. I signed that petition for architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth some time ago because the American people absolutely need the truth of 9-11. Look at the evidence. In fact, I'll say this very categorically. Any reasonable person who looks at the evidence that's been brought forward has got to come away with the feeling that something has to be done, a real investigation has to be put forward. But now the example that I want I want to strike is if again one innocent life is tragic enough that's just horrible Islam condemns it it doesn't condone it but now imagine like if 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 that if we've been off of that how many people have died because of that in another part of the world right so that cycle that hate now that violence terrorism cycle so now the feelings that you feel never forget mm -hmm. now you're bombing drone and all these people people they don't put themselves in the other people's shoes right. not justifying not at all killing innocent men and children but what are these people feeling they're human beings too how it's like these people are just less human mm -hmm. what what do you have you talked with people what do you ask them like are you uh do you innocent life there blood here same blood the same i mean yeah i mean everyone claims that yeah all blood is equal but they don't really treat it as unless equal. it's trending Unless it's trendy, that that that's the problem. We live in like a very trendy society. News is trendy. It'll last one or two weeks, and then it doesn't matter how important it was. It's gone, right? And and just people's information, people's understanding of the world is extremely restricted, you know. And they don't really understand. Before, when we were about to invade Iraq, people couldn't identify where Iraq was on a map. Many people probably still can't do that. I mean, they don't really know much about the world yet. Uh, we're supposed to be these very highly educated, enlightened intellectuals today who, who, who are supposed to understand things. The vast majority of people don't understand things. They think they understand. I think there's a lot of overconfidence in people's, people's own moral compass. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of overconfidence in people's uh, view of what they think they know about yeah. the world uh, and the way the world functions supposedly in this enlightened time that we're living in, yeah. right? Despite all these people being, you know, living misery, uh, dying, getting killed, uh, you know, just having their resources stolen, all of these things that are happening, either people, they don't know about it and they're not going to take any effort to go and investigate and it's, it, it should be presented to us, but it's not, right, because of propaganda and war machine and all of that stuff. Or people know about it, but they're, they're distracted. You know what? It's really sad. I just heard that a million people got killed in Iraq. That's really, really bad. It bothers me. But you know what? Uh, let me just go buy a cup of coffee and let's go watch a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, we just numb, numb ourselves and just get rid of it. And there's nothing wrong with watching a movie or buying a cup of coffee. But to just forget about that and all of a sudden, we just go and entertain ourselves. And that's, big, that's the problem with, with our culture, I think, is that even when people do find out, most people, when they find out, they want to just remove that because mm -hmm. they feel like they can't do anything about it. But you know what? They can do something. The fact that they know about it, the fact that they speak about it in their own small circle of influence, that's going to influence other people and eventually public perception, public opinion, plays a major role in whether or not you're going to go and invade a country or kill a group of people or you know uh, incite hatred against a particular religious group or religious minority. That makes a difference. So even if you think like you as a small person, you know you only have like 10 friends, 20 friends, what am I going to do? I can't save like the entire world. Yeah, you can't save the world, but your contribution is important. And if enough people do that, then you can make a big difference. And people like Joe, they don't just have a small circle of influence. They have a huge circle of influence. So when someone like that does a small part in removing some of these myths, talking about, you know, you know we shouldn't be killing these people and we shouldn't be you know, putting a hatred against them, it plays a major role. Ma major role. A major role. Yeah, and um, again, the experts that we quoted, one, I'd like to mention Dr. Uh, Pape from the University of Chicago. Mm -hmm. Again, he clearly states and they don't bring him on mainstream media because then that would garner the the support of more people to be against you know this hate war cycle but and and he talks about it's all about foreign occupation little to nothing to do with islam but you have this this force now coming out you know with all the negative propaganda you know spewing this false information so now 
oh, these people do honor killings. Oh, these people oppress women. Oh, these people basically making them less human. So now people just don't care. They think, okay, they deserve to be bombed. Exactly. Just bomb them. A, Keep bombing smithereens. Exactly. And blame the Islam. The Islam is the problem, That's right? It. To divert people's attention from the real problem yeah. over here. Yeah. Exploiting people's resources, you know, their land and whatnot. What's really, ca what's the root problem mm -hmm. causing this? All right. It's not Islam. Right, exactly. Yeah. So hopefully this is our humble, genuine attempt to reach people like Joe Rogan and get you and others like yourself on his show. That would that would also show a, a good attempt on his side to be genuine mm -hmm. and not to yeah, you know, be would, balanced, well balanced. Uh, absolutely. I would love to. And if, if he wants to even meet just privately first or something like that, I'm more than willing to. You know, talk to him about You're the things. imam at a, a big uh, community in what in, part of California? In Orange County, in Anaheim, California. Anaheim, California, Joe. We have uh, our good friend here, uh, also the Dean of Academic Affairs for the College of Islamic... California. California, Islamic California, California um, University there of Islamic Studies. Yes. So we have a, a person who's qualified, who can help fact check a lot of these things. Anything else we missed? I think that's we got a lot covered here. We covered quite a bit. There, and, there's uh, a, there was a lot more. Hopefully, in the future, we can uh, hope we get a good response, and um, people can help get this, push this out there to Mr. Joe Rogan, and if we get you on the show, he get we can get him on the show if he's ever in Chicago. Our door is open, and if he gets you, hopefully, this has produced much good. And if not, um, hopefully, the people that watch this they have a better understanding. And the haters are always just going to hate. It doesn't That's, matter. People just look for a reason to right. be angry, something to, you know, right. uh, take and throw. Yeah, they're not they're, they're not going to go away. There are yeah. people like that. But you know what? We hope to reach out to the people who seem to be more objective and are willing to listen. Yeah. That's that's our job, and that's what we want to do. And that's it. We're out of time. I'd like to thank you. Thank you for thank you very much. being with us again. And thank you, guys. Thank you, Joe, if you listen. And all the... People, his viewers, our viewers, and tune into the Dean Show every week. That's what we're here to sincerely try to deliver, clear up the misconceptions, and deliver the true message of Islam. And we'll see you next time. Until then, subscribe if you haven't already. Like, share, get this out so more people can benefit. See you next time. Next week, same time, same channel. Until then, peace be with you. Salam alaikum. We encourage people to come to us and ask.